Okay. <laughs> well, elections were held on the 25th of February, and many observers were on the field to cover the election process, especially our reporters. We got some exclusive on the field that day, and uh, we would like to have a feel of what it was like on the field. Uh, we will be discussing the 2023 election coverage and hearing from our field reporters as soon as they can join us now. Right now, they haven't joined us, but we are, we're being joined by someone from the Labour Party. Yes, uh, we have Mr. Austin Wenzel. He's a lecturer with the Pan-African University. I wonder if we have him on. Mr. Wenzel, he's also of the Labour Party. Okay, Mr. Nwese has not joined us yet, but we're hoping to have these people before the program finishes. Mm -hmm. But let's go back to when we were talking with our guest, uh, especially when we were talking uh, with the APC man, uh, Vincent Essien. Mm -hmm. He didn't seem to see any wrong done by, by INEC because we, <laughs> we kept ask, asking him to be, to be on the side of the people, and he never, he never saw that. But... I was just wondering, I wanted him to speak to the fact that we've had, um, I also know that Kabiru was careful anyway, we've, we've had electoral act, we've had the beavers that was promised us, and truly that was the, 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 the factor that made people turn out the way they did. And if people have seen a flop, or they have perceived a flop, Maybe there was no flop, if this secondary, tertiary, primary was anything to go by. But if people have perceived a flop, what, how do you think that will affect the next election, the governorship election, for instance? Do you think it will still have the kind of uh, excitement, the kind of spirit behind the presidential election? As My a answer to that is capital no. It's going to affect it. People are not going to come out as they did this time if they are not convinced mm. that their votes will count. Because I tell you, so many Nigerians came from abroad. Yes. The diaspora yes. were very muchly interested in this election that took place. All right. And even Nigerians at home never seen such civic excitement in the people. The mm. people have never been this excited about, you know, exercising their civic duty, especially the youth. Mm. And INEC, you know, can, you know, confirm that. So um, to see what has played out um, has really dampened the morale of the people. And I, for one, believe that INEC, who has been given the job to do, owes Nigerians an apology. I believe so. Because if I give you some, if I give you an, you know, uh, an assignment and you deliver in a way that I am not satisfied with, you owe me an explanation. Mm. And a lot of money has been spent to do this. The beavers, a lot of money, yeah. you know, budgeted for this thing. Uh, Nigerians need to be told how this money was spent and why they were not given a satisfactory uh, service done at the end of the day. Um, I have a great deal of respect for the INEC uh, chairman, Mahmoud Jakub, and I had really expected to see more than what we saw. Uh, but then, perhaps uh, some would say it's too early in the day, as Vincent has said, mm. to begin to come to some conclusions. However, uh, because of the things, the visuals, of things, this is the technology age. Yeah, it's no longer in the, you know, like what we had in the past. As it's happening, it's been recorded, yeah. it's been, pictures are taken, pictures are being uploaded uh, on the internet and all of that. So it's, and the internet never forgets. And so it's difficult to wish away some of the things that have gone out there, yeah. which is a major reason why people are crying as mm. loud as they are crying today. And if Nigerians cannot be assured of this process, mm. then there is no guarantee that they would want to participate in the same way they participated in the presidential when the governorship election comes up in March 11th. The unfortunate thing is that maybe it's also a game plan because if people do not participate, it's only those who have their personal interests that will participate and still do what they want to do. And, you know, we've been saying it on this program all the time that anybody who has to make pronouncements to... Uh, the general public should be careful. Maybe that is the reason people get uh, uh, spokesmen, spokesmen that have the requisite knowledge of what to put out and what not to put out. If the INEC had given us 
some information, but not everything. They could have explained the way whatever has happened, but they mm -hmm. were specific and they were definite about what they were saying. This is what is going to be obtainable at the elections. And it came to that point, they began to give us something else. Anyway, we have Loretta joining us now, one of our, our correspondents, or actually the Plus TV head of news, Loretta Chogo, is joining us now to discuss some of the experiences she had on the field. Uh, Loretta, welcome to the program. Hi, I'm Go. Good. Um, so we just wanted to have a feel of what it was like being on the field, especially um, like you, who gave us one exclusive story that I'm not sure any other media house was able to get. The story about the guy who wrestled down the, the hoodlums that came to snatch ballot boxes and retrieved at least that of the presidential election. So that was really, really something to remember. Tell us how your experience was generally on the field that day. Obviously, that's something that should be remembered. And, you know, recalling it now, you know, looking at the mood on the streets now, even after victory has been announced um, for the APC candidates, Bola, Tinubu, looking at the mood on the streets now, and uh, all I can see is grave silence. And I'm wondering, I thought victory is a sweet thing. However, recalling what happened, Oh, no. happened on 25th of February, you know, and particularly at Lekki Jakonde area where um, ballot boxes were snatched and only the presidential uh, ballot box was retrieved by that young man that we spoke with exclusively on Plus TV. Um, it's something to, to be amazed about because as a reporter on the field on that day and getting to meet electorates who were very enthusiastic, very uh, vibrant, ready to pick their choice of uh, president, under the rain, under the sun, ready to fight whoever was going to truncate the process. You know, it was amazing for me as a reporter to get such a view and to also know and see that young Nigerians who perhaps were coming out for the first time to cast their ballots were ready to just, you know, do what they needed to do. So for that young man who was celebrated among his peers, he was seen as the hero mm -hmm. of the election that day because when the three ballot boxes were snatched earlier before Plus TV news arrived that scene, you know, we were told, especially by the young man who, 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 who retrieved the presidential ballot box back, that thought that had invaded that place, took away the three ballot boxes, the voters ran after them. This young man did not stop, even though he was tired. Others had to stop because they couldn't contend with the thoughts. This young man didn't stop with his okay. other pairs. All right. They went after them and they dropped uh, the presidential the box. ballot box. Which yeah, was so Lorita. In my presence. Lorita. Which was counted. Lorita. Yes, Hello? I can hear you. All right. Yeah, okay. Because of time, we just have to cut you short there to find out how many polling units were you able to cover in Lagos and uh, what other things can you tell us happened at the different polling units that you got to cover? I can quickly tell you that there were logistical lo logistics challenges. Some polling units didn't start that process of election early. INEC had announced 8.30 for accreditation and voting. Some didn't start at that point. Some started at past one, some past two. I still spoke with somebody today who said at our own polling unit in Magburu area of Ubu State, the uh, INEC officials arrived at past two. And because she was hungry, she had left at home at 8.30 to be part of the process, she, had, she was hungry, she had to turn back, so she, she, she couldn't cast a ballot. I saw that there was enough security presence on the street, but not around the polling units. Around the polling units, we had just one, two policemen guarding a whole mass of people. And then there were disruptions where thugs invaded. There, were also, there was also the uh, issue of the beavers not imputing results, you know, at the point of uh, voting. And the people were, it, it became chaotic where the people had to hold INEC officials 
to the ground to say, if you do not input our votes, you're not leaving. So we have all of that on video. That did you get to meet? Captured. Did you get to meet some foreign observers on field as you went out? And did you interact well, I don't with think them? I, I did. I, I did. I didn't come across them where I was. I didn't come across them. But I met a local observ observer okay. very early in the day. That um, Joe Odumaki, who had said um, observers should not be partisan, and observers should just observe and see what's going on and report accordingly when the time for a report okay. comes. That was early on, on Saturday. Okay, right, thank, you, uh, thank you very much, uh, Loretta. We, we thank God that you were safe out there. Uh, that was a very and, and big Do you know issue. I was harassed? I know you have some of that video where I yeah. was harassed by, yes. by soldiers who said I should stop taking shots. And I was wondering, I'm on my job. Why would you <laughs> tell me to stop taking shots? They, they even seized my phone. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was following them. Yeah. That my was scary. Was uh, we saw it me, live on TV. I was, I was, I was with them asking them why I shouldn't use my phone as a journalist and I was accredited. I showed them my accreditation ID to say I'm here on top of reporting. I'm not illegal. I'm not doing anything illegal. All right. So, well, thank you, Loretta. Just hold your thought. We, we, we understand that Stephen Enoch from Kano, a correspondent in Kano, uh, can now join us. Hello, Stephen. Stephen? Stephen, unmute yourself, please. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, good afternoon. It is nice to join you. Good afternoon. All right, Stephen, uh, Conquesto won in Kano, uh, which is not so surprising. However, one thing stood out from Kano, among all the reports that came out from Kano during the election, is underage voting. Did you experience that in the areas where you covered? Well, in the areas where I covered, I did not experience underage voting, although um, some of my colleagues who were in other areas sent videos showing underage voting in some local government areas in Kano State. Hmm. But what about the um, security generally for this election and some of the discrepancies that have been uh, mentioned or uh, that were experienced in other parts of, this, uh, of the country? Were those things also in Kano? Okay, um, there was, you know, violence in some places in Kano, but not as we expected. There was a particular polling unit where I was, when someone came with a car with the people suspected, and you say harassing the person, talking about the And you know, it, it was, the person was almost mobbed, actually. And in a few minutes, we saw police presence, we saw presence of the soldiers that came from the INEC headquarters, we heard from different agents and some observers that there was violence in some places in the Kano, although the police stepped up and ensured that you know, the violence was first all in Kano states. I was actually impressed to the place where I went to because I saw police presence everywhere. But you know, the police cannot be everywhere, actually. And no doubt there was violence. When I realized what that uh, there was no voter turnout because Number of photographs and the number of active was 1.7. Like, photo apathy, if you ask me. Sadly, we can't, uh, we're having audio problems uh, speaking with Stephen Enoch, our correspondent in Kano. Stephen Enoch trying to explain to yeah. us some of the things he observed in the field in Kano State. He didn't see underage voting, mm -hmm. which some other um, reporters from uh, some of the media outfits, you know, captured. But of course, he's not omnipresent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he did say that his uh, colleagues yeah. uh, sent him videos because they witnessed it. So, well, it's as good as saying authentic. Yeah, but as, as the voice was, you know, fading away, I heard him talk about, you know, voter apathy over there in Kano which is quite uh, strange, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's quite strange to hear that because, okay, Kano gave us one, uh, one million plus, uh, you know, that gave Conquistor the kind of uh, 
uh, votes that he had, and then he won the election. And he said voter apathy. I don't know if it's really voter apathy, or Beavers at least did one thing good for us. Because in the past, we hear of the Kardashian states, and we hear in inflated numbers, if you ask me, mm -hmm. uh, millions upon millions coming from these states. And because of the Beavers, even with the incidences of uh, underage voters, we still had a streamlined kind of number of people that voted. And they turned out. But if you compare that to what is obtainable uh, or what used to be obtainable in the past, then it's a very small number and you can call it voter apathy. So I'm looking at it at a liberal side and saying that, okay, it may not really actually be uh, voter apathy, but the fact that the real voters voted, voted this time and the numbers were not that much. Well, uh, we could have taken more reporters that tell us their experiences, but the time is up and would like to thank you so very much. I particularly would like to thank you because it might be the last time I'm thanking you on the run-up because <laughs> <laughs> next time you may not see my face anymore for a very long time. Who knows what happens tomorrow, but you will always see Maureen and her face is more, more agreeable than mine. Anyway. Are you sure? <laughs> Maureen, thank you so much for accepting to do this while I move up to Plus Politics that comes up every 7 o'clock in the evening. So I hope that you'll join me if you are that much of a fan of me. Thank you for doing <laughs> well, thank this. Thank you, Nyamgul. It's yeah. a pleasure to join you on this. But we're here. We're here. Plus yeah. Politics, run up the news. So long as it's a it's, plus, it's plus on the TV. lives of the people. Yeah. It's Plus TV. <laughs> And it's, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. And we'll be here tomorrow for more updates on what's unfolding from the elections. Uh, no doubt there'll be litigations. We yeah. want to know what the uh, other parties are doing and how they're doing it. We also want to hear what the president-elect, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, uh, has to say to us. Uh, he's asked for calm and he's reached out to the other candidates, you know, from the other parties uh, to join him to move the country forward. Because... At the end of the day, we want Nigeria to move forward. Yeah. That's just the crux that's of the it. matter. Every Nigerian home and abroad is seeking for the Nigerian dream, if we have one yet. I, <laughs> Do you have a Nigerian I have, dream? I have for Nigeria. <laughs> Do you have a Nigerian <laughs> dream? Let's know what it is. So that's what it's all about, the Nigerian dream. We want to see Nigeria move forward. APC, PDP, LP, AD, mm. A party, whatever party, we want someone that can move the country forward. So yeah. far, a winner has been declared, and that is in the person of Bola Ahmed Tinubu of the, all, of the APC. We wish him the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. So until tomorrow, when you join uh, her for the rest of the program, or another edition of the program, and me for the last time, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. Bye for now.